This is gonna be a series of videos. I'm gonna break down the different parts of the 107 that you need to know, and it's up to date. I'm including remote ID and flights over people, uh, night flights, all the stuff that wasn't released when this first came out. So if you've been watching other videos on YouTube, they're probably not as current, and this is really important that you know all the information. So check a link down below if you're looking for a particular subject or part of the 107 that you need to study, I've got that for you. Plus, I also have some study guides that I've built. Now, I've taught this class to high school students, so I've given them some additional resources, and I've got those for you down below. So print it out, follow along, fill in the blanks, and maybe that'll help you study. Now, if you find this information useful and you want to help support the channel, there are a couple of links down below on ways you can do that. And why not just give it a thumbs up, click the subscribe button, that helps as well. So keep in mind when you take this test, it is a multiple choice exam. There are three questions and a lot of times one of those answers isn't a very good one. So if you kind of know this information, you'll be able to eliminate at least one, hopefully, then you're down to a 50-50 chance. Now you're gonna use this test supplement that the testing center gives you. You can bring a calculator, you might not need it, some scratch paper, there's a little bit of math. We'll talk about that here in one of these videos. Now this test supplement, I've created a condensed version, right? It's really thick, you don't need every page. I suggest you print out the condensed version that I created for you. I basically just took out the pages you don't need. And remember the legend, that thing is key. A lot of the answers to the test are found on the legend. So keep that in mind when you're taking the test, keep referencing that if it's asking for an airspace or is this a lighted obstruction or group obstruction, all those things, they're in there, lots of information in there. So make sure you're referencing that while you're taking the test. I've got some additional resources for people that are Patreons that starts at a buck a month. So if that's something you're interested in, again, more information down below. You also may be interested in buying a drone. Now we've done extensive breakdowns on all sorts of different drones and all sorts of different price ranges for all sorts of different purposes. You know, check the link down below for some of those videos. And if you're looking for the TLDR version of that, we got links down below for drones broken down by price price range. Anyway, so let's get into the part 107 study. All right, here we're going to run through some really important numbers to help you prepare for your FAA part 107 exam. Think of this as like a quick study guide. Another thing to remind you uh, that is helpful, use the legend. Uh, it's page 1-1, lots of answers there. And if the question is asking about uh, who's in charge, who's responsible, the answer is almost always the remote pilot in command. All right, so here we go. One, one refers to the number of drones you can fly simultaneously. Now see if you can't answer these before I give you the answer. 0 0.04 is the maximum blood alcohol level that you can you can have before you're flying. A lot more, more restrictive than driving a car in most states. All right, 122.9 is the multicom frequency for self-announced procedures. How about 100 miles an hour or 87 knots? I've seen it both question both ways. Yeah, you got this one. That's the fastest that you can legally fly your drone. All right, 0 0.55 pounds, also known as 250 grams, is the lightest uh, that a drone can be before it must be registered. So if it's 250 grams exactly or 0.55 pounds exactly, you must register it. It's also subject to remote ID now. Oof. 55 pounds. Yeah, that's the heaviest your drone can be. Uh, if it's more than, it's, if it's equal to or more than, you got to go through another process to fly it. All right, 30 minutes. Got a little clue there for you. 30 minutes is uh, twilight time. 30 minutes before sunrise or after sunset, you can still fly. You do need lights that are visible for three statue miles. Eight hours. Got a clue for you on this one. Yeah. Eight hours is the time that must pass since the last time you had an alcoholic beverage, um, eight hours and 0 0.04. You got to meet both of those stipulations. 10 days is the amount of time that you have to file an FAA accident report. How about 30 days? 30 days is the time you have uh, to notify the FAA. If you happen to move, you need to change your address. 90 days. Uh, lead time and requesting an FAA waiver, right? So if you want to do something that um, 
is a little out of the ordinary, you have to request a waiver. You need to do that 90 days ahead of time. How about a year? A year must pass after your uh, final narcotics conviction uh, if you want to sit for this exam. 13 years. 13 years is the age you must be in order to register a drone. So if you're not 13 years old, you know, someone else can register it for you. 16 years. Hmm. You must be 16 years old to hold a Part 107 license. I've actually taught some high school students that couldn't set, sit for the exam um, until they turn 16. That's a rule. 24 months, also known as two years. Yeah, that's how long your certification is good for. You have to recert every two years. Uh, and you can do it online right now. It's pretty easy. 60 minutes, trick question. Yeah, there are 60 minutes in a degree of latitude or longitude. Each uh, tick mark is a, uh, is a minute. 3SM means three statute miles. The distance your anti-collision lights must be visible when you're flying during twilight. Um, it's also just kind of the general visibility that you must have in order to fly. 500 feet. A couple of things here. Um, minimum distance of feet below a cloud, right? So below a cloud um, vertically. 400 feet. Uh, the maximum height you can fly. AGL, right? For above, above ground level. Um, but you can also go 400 feet above um, a structure. Right, so it's 400 feet plus 400 feet from the top of that structure within a 400 foot radius. So three, three, three things applicable there. About 2,000 feet. There are two answers to this one. Right, it's the minimum minimum number of feet horizontally. Right, horizontally this way from a cloud that you must fly, and also guy wires. About 500 bucks. What is that? Right, uh, that is the repair cost of accident damage that requires you to file a report um, to the FAA, right? So if there's damage of $500 or more, not counting your drone, they don't care about that. It doesn't count. It does not count. All right, what is level three? Uh, this serious injury AIS level that requires you to file an accident report. Uh, basically, if someone has cut bleeding, um, stitches, broken bones, stuff like that. All right, now we're getting to remote ID. Category one is... Now you will have to know the difference uh, between these categories. All right, so category one, we've got a sub 250 gram drone uh, that does have remote ID and propeller guards. Category two, it's a little bit different. Um, it's more than 250 grams. It must have a remote ID. And if it crashes, it cannot create more than 11 foot pounds of torque on impact. Very specific. About category three, Category three, also more than 250 grams, also must have remote ID, but um, it can have an impact no greater than 25 foot pounds of torque if you crash. Category four, getting bigger. Big drone, and you must have airworthiness certificate under part 21. Yeah, those are some important numbers that you need to know for the FAA exam for the part 107. Anyway, I hope this was helpful in helping you study. If you're looking for more information, right, you want to learn more about the National Airspace System, read METAR reports. We've got all of that stuff covered for you in other videos. Check the description down below. We also have some tools and other resources to help make this just a little bit easier. Anyway, make sure you check us out on halfchrome.com. Good luck on that test.